Welcome to this week's BitShares Dev Hangout. This recording is brought to you by the Beyond Bitcoin crew. We welcome all BitShares members to join us weekly and discuss the latest news, updates, and developments. If you'd like to participate in our next meeting, then please join us live on Mumble every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Did you know the Beyond Bitcoin show now has a registered delegate? Please consider voting if you find our Hangouts and recordings useful. The delegate name to vote for is fuzzy.beyondbitcoin. Again, that's fuzzy.beyondbitcoin. The Beyond Bitcoin crew would like to send out a big thank you to everyone who's already voted and allowing us the opportunity to serve the BitShares ecosystem and our valued community members. So once again, welcome and please enjoy the show. Welcome to another Beyond Bitcoin weekly hangout. Today is Friday, April 3rd, 2015. On the line for his weekly call is Byte Master of the BitShares Decentralized Exchange. Delegated proof of stake is the underlying protocol that powers all BitShares powered chains, from the decentralized exchange to music and play. This protocol not only gives users 10 second confirmation times and visa level scalability, but more importantly, it is the only protocol that gives users of the ecosystem the power to vote for employees who will bring value to the blockchain. With that said, please remember that although ByteMaster is the chief engineer and developer of delegated proof of stake and BitShares, he is not the king of BitShares. Everything he says is his opinion, and he is here as much to learn from you as you are to learn from him. So let's go ahead and dig in for this week's Hangout. And please remember, if you see value in the service that we provide, please consider voting for the fuzzy.beyondbitcoin delegate so we can continue offering this to you. Would you like to go ahead and get started with some of these questions, ByteMaster? Ask away. The first question from the thread is from Tom. And he says here, I will repeat the question that I asked last week. When will we see a project roadmap and why don't we have one for all to see? A project roadmap is a very difficult thing to share, primarily because it sets expectations for things that can change and it causes speculation about future directions. And because we internally change things, update things quite frequently. We don't want our changes and our thoughts as we innovate to sway or scare the market. Our general approach has been to focus and figure out exactly what we want the new features to be, agree among every, agree about everything internally, and then announce what, what it is the core developers have uh, feels the best way forward. At that point in time, it will be on a roadmap. Uh, everyone will know what it is, and uh, the people will know what to expect. But we don't want to set deadlines. Things are constantly changing on the ground, and any roadmap we publish would be out of date on a, you know, every couple of weeks as things come up, such as partners that need our time or bugs that we have to squash, anything like that will affect schedule. And a roadmap that is purely based upon features, those features are often hotly debated, right? So I used to talk on these mumble sessions about ideas of everything from prediction markets to scripting to bond markets and things like that. Uh, if we were to put those things on the roadmap and people were counting on them and then we were to take them off the roadmap because different things, uh, there would be a lot of people that would be upset and the uncertainty associated with us changing things like that would have negative impact. Or at least that's what a lot of people have told us is that they want to know what's actually happening and not worry about things that may or may not actually happen. So we have an internal roadmap and a direction that we're going you can say that you know we are forward thinking way beyond 1.0 features but we are doing all that stuff privately and then releasing it once we're sure what 
the uh, outcome is going to be. Do you know of any projects that are following a roadmap that have put out a roadmap and you feel are actually following it pretty well? And if so, what would be the difference between those projects and BitShares? Moonstone put out a roadmap in the interview with Max, and it was quite a good one. If a roadmap is general in nature and is more or less setting your priorities, then you're not really, if you don't pin it down to particular quarters or time frames, then you're really just saying, here's the trajectory, here's what we consider is more important than this other thing. And, and of course, that can be adjusted as well. But when that adjustment needs to take place, it should take place ahead of when the when that uh, time frame, you, in other words, if you say, well, we've decided that this, this other item is more important than what we put on the roadmap, you need to explain that because that's a major change of direction. But, and I don't see that kind of thing changing all that often. So when I, my view of a roadmap is more general in nature, not specific to, to be a predictor. Our high level roadmap end goal is mass adoption. But in order to get there, that means we have to have a necessary foundation. So we've been focusing primarily on performance and scalability for the long haul. We recognize that the, the crypto industry as a whole is actually moving slower than a lot of us think it is. There's a saying, it's not who's first to market, it's who's last to market and can dominate. So a lot of what we are doing is focusing on the long-term play rather than rushing uh, short-term you know proof of concept features look you know if we get the you know make something like bid asset work that's great if they're not scalable for the long haul then uh, that sets us all back those are the type of things in general that we're looking at doing so what you can expect from us going into the future is a focus on industrial quality blockchain technology, which means a heavy focus on unit testing, regression testing, and performance. Um, my analysis of the market uh, and all the existing technologies out there is that uh, there's this gaping hole, and I don't think that you're going to see mass adoption of banks until the technology is able to support them. Banks, if they were to turn on turn on and adopt it immediately could pump so many transactions through the system that the systems would crumble. And so they can't adopt it until the technology is ready. And most people are it's like chicken and the egg. No one wants to invest in high performance technology and solving the scalability concerns until you have something like the banks. My conclusion is that it's inevitable that major banks and in financial infrastructure and markets will be adopting this technology and when they come to adopt it they are going to need something that can handle their transaction volumes i think it would be amazing for someone like visa or mastercard to you know change their back end infrastructure to use it the new york stock exchange could switch over to blockchain technology a lot of markets or something like it obviously the new york stock exchange is doing things at a scale that a distributed system can't. But for those who care about settlement, that's final and absolute without counterparty. You can't beat blockchain technology. So I think there's going to be a demand for a blockchain that can handle thousands of transactions per second. And that is ultimately what needs to be built and ready. And BitShares needs to be there so that we can have our decentralized exchange be the exchange or the technology platform that these other companies can use. So. What you just described is very general and very good. I think that would serve very well as a roadmap, so to speak. And when I got involved last April, a year ago, the thing that got me involved was your, your plan for how you were going to have uh, Coyote and all these DNS and all these different things to me, painted a roadmap picture. It wasn't literally a roadmap, but to me, you had a very strong progression of elements that you were trying to address with BitShares. And, and that was, in my view, a roadmap. Now, other crypto coins formalize that more, and maybe they pin themselves down too much, but, but not having anything in terms of this is what's more important than this, and this is the playing field that we're all in, 
I think is uh, is is a market. We're missing the market in being able to. We're not we're not taking advantage of a marketing opportunity by doing that by having not having that. My my feel on this is that, and this is of course just my opinion, is that the market is so huge uh, from a, a, a like what Dan was saying, an industrial perspective and, and trading perspective, and the crypto market is, is so minuscule that I think uh, at least you know my personal feeling is I would rather have a system that can handle the big market and let the other cryptocurrencies you know fight over the, the, the crumbs uh, but it's just you know the crypto the crypto community is so 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 small so you believe that the working on the core features and really getting that foundation solidly in place like it seems like Byte Master is doing and trying to kind of avoid giving any necessarily like something that could be looked at as a promise uh, on other features. You, th- you think that this is actually a pretty good way of moving forward. I look at it as, as time allocation and they can spend their time, you know, making this thing rock solid and scalable to the point where it can handle, you know, Visa or MasterCard level transaction flows. But if they, if they focus on releasing something that option by you know bitcoin people or the crypto community or even you know some some retailers i think most of the time would be spent on trying to facilitate little fixes and stuff to to make that work when you know the larger the larger pie would be uh not as as well allocated what i've realized is we can create a product and get it out there and try to advertise it and get everyone to start using it but you want to make sure you have the product that is ready for all that before you go that approach. Historically, we have been so focused on we need to get to market or someone's going to beat us and it's going to be over. But like the internet, these things are not going to develop overnight. Over the course of the next five years, you're going to see crypto technology gradually increase in adoption. And to the extent that we are so focused on you know, tomorrow and the, the immediate impact and immediate user adoption, uh, we will produce a product that evolves into a hodgepodge of, um, of features. Yeah, and that was sort of what we were seeing. And, you know, we have these mumbled sessions and we said, well, let's innovate our way out by adding more and more features to BitShares, thinking that that will drive users and people start using it. But the man on the street is not going to adopt a system that is not predictable and dependable. And I've identified some major areas where all cryptocurrencies fall short, including BitShares. And most of the areas where BitShares currently fall short uh, are actually holdovers where we borrowed design elements from Bitcoin. So the guys from Bitscape came here yesterday and we had a great discussion and one of the things that has been forgotten by those of us who have been here for a year and largely forgotten by people who didn't even show up until after BitShares was released, and that is that when we set out to build BitShares and when the donations started coming in to make BitShares possible, the idea and the roadmap at that time was proof of work or pr- something like pure coin proof of stake, no price feeds, no you know, five minute blocks, maybe one minute blocks, but nothing like 10 second blocks, no named accounts. We were going to be in bit shares. Right, we had a system that was looking very much like Bitcoin and our team has innovated and given us things like Titan delegated proof of stake, the current bid asset system, the advanced user issued asset system. We have delivered so much more than the original roadmap even called for at the time that uh, we raised most of the money we got for this project. And what I told the Bitscape people is that you're going to see as much innovation from our team in 2015 as you saw in 2014. And that the improvement uh, in the quality of what we have out there is going to be as dramatic. It's kind of hard to share with you guys the exact details, but uh, I've been releasing parts of it, like our new database architecture that's dramatically faster. There's 
things about blockchain technology that are somewhat fundamental and that you need to design to accommodate. And that is that the, it's fundamentally a sequential process. And that sequential process is where the state of one transaction depends upon the, the validity of one transaction depends upon the transaction before that. And so doing things in parallel is a huge problem that that inner core part of blockchain processing needs to be super efficient and all cruft needs to be peeled away from that so that you can process transactions at the speed that's required. The architectures of Bitcoin, Ripple, BitShares, uh, as it's currently implemented, makes it very difficult to uh, optimize that inner loop. And so those are the type of things that we're looking at is how can you optimize that, make as much stuff parallel as possible. Because if you don't do that, then what's going to happen is you're going to start to grow, start to get big, we'll get to about the size of Bitcoin. And then we're going to go to the next level and it's going to be like, oh, nope, time for a complete overhaul. Yeah, and that, that would be much more devastating. So there are so many innovations we're working on. There's ease of use innovations. Um, I had an interview with Adam B. Levine yesterday as well. And he was asking me about various things about Bitcoin, the block size, the fees. All those things are sources of uncertainty. And when I make a transaction on the Bitcoin network, I don't know how long it's going to take to be included. I don't know how much fee I need to pay. I could pay a lot and have it take a long time. I could pay a little and have it be instant. Uh, I don't know when the next block is going to be produced. Is it going to be you know, one minute, 10 minutes, an hour? All those things lead to a bad user experience. In the case of Bitcoin, I don't know when are they going to increase the block size. And so they've got all these hard forks that are going to happen in the future, and they don't have a means of um, tweaking the parameters. So one of the things we've done with BitShares when we got it to market is we just hard-coded a lot of values into the system. Everything from 101 delegates to the maximum block size. And we left a lot of things up to the delegates, just like we did, just like Bitcoin did, like what the transaction fee should be. Uh, the client always pays uh, some fees. So it's somewhat predictable, but there's no consensus or simple method of knowing, or coordinating the changing of that stuff, and it leads to hard forks. So Adam was asking me how Bitcoin needs to address things like transaction fees and block sizes, and it needs to be a process that the key parameters of the system can be changed by the built-in consensus itself. That's the only way the system's going to be flexible enough going forward. So we're looking at ways of making just about every parameter in the system tunable so that if things need to change, it can change without any hard forks and in a predictable manner. It's really about, in addition to the performance, making the system flexible enough that we don't need to do hard forks I would like to get the blockchain to the point where it does everything it needs to do. It's flexible enough that it doesn't have to change and that the focus can then be on building everything around the blockchain. That is, I guess, the long-term goal. The money needs to be made in the businesses around the blockchain. Now, the blockchain needs to just adapt. It needs to adapt without hard forks and without uncertainty. This is actually a, a pretty good place to dig into the next question, but I'm going to put it on hold just for one moment because SXIS, Sixes, I am assuming, has a question in the sidebar. Do you feel side chains will help remediate some of the uncertainties and barriers to innovation in Bitcoin? I'm not supposed to comment too much on... Uh, competitors sure. um, <laughs> <laughs> no uh, now in in general i feel the side chain approach is just like having all, parallel alt chains uh, parallel blockchains being able to move money between them atomic cross chain trading 
I think something like Codius that Ripple has, where you have smart oracles, will be a better way of handling cross-chain transfers. You can imagine a situation where you have a automated multi-sig and of you know maximum multi-sig size bitcoin supports 15 an automated gateway that would map bitcoin to iou bitcoin where the issuer is 15 multi-sig on both sides if you had something like that you'd have just as much if not more security than the core block production of bitcoin because you got 15 people which is more than the number of mining pools uh seven of which uh, or eight of which have to sign off of sign off on all transfers between one chain and the other. No one person is able to steal the money, or even a subset of people is able to steal the money. That type of gateway would allow you to move between bit shares and Bitcoin in a manner that's very much like side chains, except far more flexible. You don't actually need to change anything in Bitcoin or Bit shares to implement that although we are looking at ways of making that easier to implement so that is how i see side chains evolving a combination of smart contracts or smart gateways i think is going to be how side chains evolve and uh, those gateways can be much faster much more reliable than uh, the approach of side chains themselves Uh, side chains depend upon proof of work because they use proof of work as a proxy for a signature. So from what I can tell, side chains are completely vulnerable to uh, having all the funds on the side chain stolen by someone who has more proof of work. It's also not open in the sense that not anyone can start a side chain. It has to be supported by the miners. And so it's a insiders have to vote to add new features. Uh, then the Bitcoin holders have no say over it. Someone mentioned that Open transactions is kind of like the 15, right? The voting pools. It would be similar to open transactions, except for the fact that uh, it's a voting pool for moving money between two chains instead of between a blockchain and a private server. But yeah, I think that's there's that. Uh, the other high level philosophy that I'm coming to is with respect to privacy. We have like Dash or Dark Coin. A lot of people are wanting and clamoring for being private and anonymous on a blockchain. My analysis of the situation is that that type of privacy is hard to use. It's slow and a single slip up compromises everything. And that most people don't use systems that are too hard to use. They go without security rather than have a hard to use one. And in fact, Ease of use improves your security and your privacy. If you have a system that's hard to use, then you're more likely to screw it up uh, and not know it. So it's kind of dangerous to use a system that's not perfectly secure and easy to use. Do you think this is coming in in the future? Do you think that there, I mean, that it's going to be relatively possible within the next four or five years? And this is, of course, asking you to look into a crystal ball, which is pretty unfair. But do you think that privacy? and ease of use can go together? Yes, privacy and ease of use can go together. What can't go together is privacy implemented on a blockchain. Best way to have privacy is to have a friend manage all your money and transfer money. You know, a bank. A bank is a perfect example of privacy. If everyone trusts the bank uh, not to reveal information to anyone else, and if you use something like open transactions, so that the bank actually has no records that they could reveal and it's completely automated, then you have a very high degree of privacy because only the parties involved and the bank know what happened. They're the only ones that have the opportunity to know what's happening. Anything that's going on on a blockchain is subject to timing attacks. The only way that you can get privacy is to actually have large delays between when you initiate a transaction and when it comes through. You have to use... Uh, identical quantities and the computations involved in the techniques that are available today are extremely expensive. And the mixing services only work when you are hiding in large numbers. And for the most part, the government can still track down and uh, monitor timely attacks and so on and so forth. My approach to privacy is 
to make it so that you can actually trust someone like a bank or a new bank, not existing banks. Because you can trust people, and there's, the Swiss banks are an example. Of, they have, you know, for 100 years or more, historically had a reputation of being absolutely secure and perfect privacy, and, you know, everyone just used a Swiss bank. But that's so, changed recently. Right. So, but the problem is not the Swiss banks. The problem is the powerful governments that are coercing the banks into behaving. The free market can provide you the privacy you need, but the problem we have is coercive actors that are able to compromise all privacy through coercion. And I think transparency and complete transparency is the way that these blockchains need to go. And if you want privacy, you do it through a a third party or a bank. Or you, if you want to, you can try to use some of these privatizing services. I think that because we were so focused on privacy with Titan in BitShares, it worked well when BitShares was small, it wouldn't scale, and it added significantly to the ease of use and user experience. It made it, made it harder, and those things hurt adoption more than lack uh, of privacy. So I, I don't want to have false sense of security and I think moving to a system where it's completely transparent and everyone knows it's transparent, that way you can act accordingly. You always act knowing that, hey, everyone knows what's going on here. And if I need it to be private, I need to go through a third party or go to a, you know, in and out of another system. That's, and I basically have to work very hard. I think making the core blockchain try to provide those features will only hinder adoption by parties, by the banks, by the governments is going to make it easy to attack the system from a, your funding terrorism type of BS argument. But that is exactly what, how these systems will be attacked. So I think that if you produce a system that's completely transparent, then you're not subject to attacks on that front. Eventually that system will allow us to free ourselves from the banks. And then you can have the privacy systems that the free market can provide that are beyond the reach of coercion. But if you, if you go straight up to uh, the privacy, you're going to be a very small club of people and you're never going to get mass adoption. Sure. And, and it sounds, so it sounds like you're saying you're more open to the free market third parties providing the solutions after the fact of after mass adoption occurs, which probably, I mean, there's obviously a group of people who are very interested in this level of privacy, so the, their needs most likely will be served by the free market. Um, and it brings to mind question, the third question, actually, that was asked by a community member here. Uh, can the core developers have a documentation day in which they bring their code comments up to spec? He says, I know this community is impatient, but a better documented code will encourage third parties to get more involved. And that's Schechter. Yes, so uh, we're, we're working on improving the documentation and process internally. And you'll start to see the results of our efforts there uh, in the months ahead. Awesome. Clout asks here, uh, I know that BM is enamored with the whole idea of self-funding DAX, but given that this mo model doesn't seem feasible with such a low market capitalization in the BitShares uh, is the BitShares team actively looking for more funding options? Is that a question you can answer? And feel free, of course, I I'm just going to let everybody know here, everything that ByteMaster is saying isn't guaranteed the end of the road, the end of the line. It's, it's with his best knowledge, and he's trying to help us understand what's going on behind the scenes um, to the best of his understanding at the moment. Well, it goes without saying that the core development team needs money to compensate for the value that they're providing uh, to keep everyone you know, around and happy. Uh, and we, the last thing we want to do is rely upon uh, people sacrificing themselves personally for the benefit of everyone else. So um, yes, the development team needs money and we are looking at all the different avenues available to make that happen. But the one common thread to it all is that everything we are doing to raise money it involves business models that build around BitShares. If you like a Bitcoin, 
uh, all the business and, and core developers, they're all funded by businesses built around Bitcoin. So we're looking at ways of making money around BitShares. Because BitShares exists, it creates opportunities. So that's what we're doing. I'm committed to uh, making sure that the development team stays together, that it stays funded, and that BitShares and the ecosystem continues to grow. I think I'm not the only one doing that. Uh, there are lots of startups in the ecosystem, and each and every one of them got they get some delegate pay, and that's a, a small token. It offsets some costs, but ultimately, like I made a blog post a long time ago, delegates need a business model, and that's exactly what we're working on. The developers need a business model that makes them money while improving bit shares, and the delegate pay just helps smooth that out. So what I guess I'm hearing, uh, and please tell me if, you, if I'm wrong, but the team that is working on BitShares also, because of this expertise that they have on the internal level of working on BitShares, also has the ability to offer that expertise as perhaps um, in a contract fashion or to kind of sit down with people who want to use the blockchain technology and kind of teach them about how the uses, the use cases and stuff like that behind the scenes. So they can kind of hire themselves out as knowledge experts in the BitShares ecosystem. Yeah, not just in the BitShares ecosystem, but the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. So we are, you know, have a meetings on a weekly basis over lunch. We're, we're constantly brainstorming ways of making money to keep the team alive and funded without having to rely on additional delegates. And this also potentially brings in uh, brings opportunities to connect with people who are outside of the BitShares ecosystem, maybe working in cryptocurrency or a field that would be uh, would gain substantially from the introduction of uh, cryptocurrency or the blockchain technology. Would you say it kind of helps us to also bring the those people who might not be familiar with BitShares into our ecosystem to potentially work for us later on? It does. A lot of the developers are actively working with partners that want to integrate, but they don't have developers with expertise in-house. So there's lots of companies that want to integrate and make money and they're willing to pay to get some of that stuff done. And so we're setting up uh, some of the developers so that they can earn some money by helping them integrate, which then, of course, helps BitShares. Uh, not necessarily working on the core code. And so you'll notice that not all developers are contributing directly to the BitShares code base a lot of the stuff they're doing now um, uh, we actually can't talk about because our partners have business goals that depend upon um, you know keeping things under wraps until launch. So we are actively working with partners to do those type of things. So there's a lot of stuff going on uh, below the surface. Uh, I wish I could talk about it all, but you, it's you okay. Know. We don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you guys understand. Uh, you know, when I like to talk too much and I need to, you know, it hurts our ability to get partners if I talk too much. So Sure. Well, well, we're glad that you reach out to us and that the community has the ability to ask you these questions. Now, we understand that uh, long gone are the idealistic days where we can talk, let you talk, uh, ask you questions about anything and your opinions don't cause too much trouble, but we, we never know what we're going to say if something that's said is going to cause ripples in ways that we didn't expect. So um, I think we're learning as a community where we can go and where we can't. So thank you for, for being honest about it, at least. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip over the other questions from Clout because we're running a little bit low on time and I'd like to cover a couple questions from a couple other people. Uh, Shentist asks here, is not publishing price feeds a bad example for core developers? And what does the team think on uh, about this? And he goes on in, in the actual thread to talk about a couple people. I'm not going to bring it up here, but I will say that if the people who are listening go and look on the forums, they can see all this. I just don't want it to be directed at a single individual. If we could talk about the topic in general. Generally speaking, we want all delegates to be producing price feeds. If a delegate can't stay on top of it, though, and they're only being paid the low 3% rate, 
it's better not to publish any feed at all than to publish a, a bogus feed or have your data out of sync or any of the things that go wrong. So there's some extra work involved with publishing price feeds. I think that we can tolerate a couple, you know, maybe 10 delegates or so not publishing feeds, but it's ultimately up to the users to decide if they're going to actually punish people who don't produce a feed. I think a lot of the developers are providing so much value that, uh, you know, the cost of them not producing a feed is insignificant next to everything else. So it's, I do know that some of the people who haven't produced feeds have recently worked to add feeds. But if you think about it, maintaining those feeds has cost people like uh, Theoretical or Ben uh, to spend half a day getting it set up and hours here and there maintaining it. And that's all time that he's not working on unit tests and regression tests and getting the advanced user issue asset features out. So when you don't see a feed, you have to realize that that's because if they're a developer or whatever, they have to choose between getting product out and getting feed out. And as long as we have sufficient feeds, the system's secure. Do, do uh, you see a point in time uh, when the markets may be efficient enough or liquid enough to not require feeds? Yes. Long term, I want to update the market so the feed is more of a training wheel and have less direct influence over the trading prices. I think that's an area where bit shares could be improved. Right now, the feeds are in there because we have a very low liquidity market and we are looking at options for increasing the liquidity through for profit entities that can reliably run market maker bots that basically ma maintain the peg like kind of like Nubits does, only it's with collateral that's on the blockchain. And as we get to that point, the only thing the feed needs to do is uh, prevent massive abuse during uh, illiquid times or attempts at market manipulation. That's where I see things going longer term. So even today, the feed is not the deciding factor. It controls a sell wall, but because of the way the bear market is, the shorts are setting prices that are not at the feed but higher up and you have a more V-shaped market instead of a giant short wall like we saw before. And that's just a sign that the market's actually mature and more balanced now than it was before. As a result, it doesn't matter what you set the feed to, you're not going to trigger margin calls in this system. So if the feed's wrong, it's not going to hurt too much. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to let people know as, as an update, uh, I now have my bot trading uh, USD, CNY, silver, gold, and BTC against BTS in the internal market uh, with some delegate funds funneling to it. And it's right now sitting at about a little over 200,000 BTS and it's growing at about uh, uh, about 1,000 BTS a day, maybe a little bit more. Growing by, you're talking about profit or growing because of funding from a, a new delegate? Uh, it's a bit of a mix. Uh, I'm still developing the uh, the analytics, and so it's going to take me a, a minute to filter out the, uh, I guess, the subsidy. So I can I can better evaluate the performance of the bot. But to, uh, to be honest, I'm not really too concerned about the profitability uh, as long as it's not losing too much money. I'm I'm more interested in, in uh, making the markets liquid. I think that's long term uh, going to be more profitable for everyone to have the market liquid. I appreciate your efforts and uh, everything you're doing there. Thank you. Well, this actually plays into, uh, I'm going to go back real quick. Clout did ask a question that really closely ties into this. Is there anything that you can tell us uh, regarding remittances uh, and John Underwood? I can tell you that uh, we talk with John Underwood multiple times every single week and that uh, he's very much involved in bit shares and doing things that would further the cause of what we're all trying to achieve. You have to ask him anything else because uh, partners, uh, sure. confidentiality. Well, uh, I've reached out to him and I will be waiting for a response and I'll let everybody know what, you know, if, you know, um, there are times when businesses that are working with us, obviously for, for obvious reasons, have non-disclosure agreements and 
keep certain things close to their chest because there are competitors out there who would steal it in a heartbeat. Um, so that makes sense. There's just one final question, and this is regarding the object graph. And Yellow Echo asks, what is the current state and status of the object graph? And can you elaborate on its impact in the BitShares ecosystem and the time horizon for which scripting could be implemented? And this is, uh, I'm just going to say this to anybody, to Yellow Echo and anybody listening, this is a pretty uh, deep question. So, ByteMaster, you're more than willing to take a bite or whatever size bite you want off of it. I would say that the scope and power of the object graft and scripting is something that we think about on a you know, regular basis and that you will see a very competitive platform for bit shares with those things sometime this year. But I, uh, once again, that's purely a projection. I think that we are going to do for scripting and object graph type stuff, what we did for Titan and consensus. So we've got very ideas that go far beyond anything that's already out there, but it might take a little bit longer because we want to get it right. We appreciate you taking your valuable time to reach out to the community. This is one of the few places that you see outside of Bitcoin where developers meet with community uh, communities of investors and crypto enthusiasts. And quite frankly, this is one of the only places where you can do it free of charge or generally very uh, low barrier to entry. So we appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close it down for now and we'll go ahead and open it back up next week. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Catch you later. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kim.